Thanks. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Ben and I'm part of the atmospheric dispersion and air quality team at the Met Office. And uh, this talk is going to give a quick overview of how we use Jasmine to work with our collaborators and partners uh, with the Met Office atmospheric dispersion model. Uh, this talk has been put together with my colleagues Flora Malaval and Andrew Jones, but there's work from lots of other people that are represented in here as well. So before I go any further, uh, a quick introduction to what the Met Office Atmospheric Dispersion Model is. Uh, it's called NAME, which uh, is an acronym for Numerical Atmospheric Dispersion Modeling Environment. It misses the D, which is kind of the most important word in there, I think. But that's explained by its old name of the Nuclear Accident Model. Um, <laughs> NAME was originally developed in the 80s in response to the Chernobyl incident, when there was suddenly a, a big need to track the transport of, of stuff in the atmosphere. And so that's what, what NAME does. It's a Lagrangian particle dispersion model at its heart, but it also includes an Eulerian grid model for some applications. If we want to track the, the transport and dispersion of stuff in the atmosphere, we need to know something about the state of the atmosphere. We need to know what the weather's doing. So one of the key inputs is uh, uh, a set of uh, 4D meteorological data. Uh, because we're from the Met Office, we tend to use the Met Office model for that, though other numerical weather prediction models could be used in principle. Uh, the model is used from local to global scales, so from the dispersion of a smoke plume from an industrial fire all the way up to the global transport of a volcanic ash cloud from a major eruption and over a, a wide range of temporal scales too. And ultimately when we use NAME, we're usually wanting to find a prediction of air concentration of something, how much of something is deposited to the ground, uh, back trajectories of air parcels, amongst other things. And this is uh, a little example of a name simulation. So sticking with the radiological theme, this is uh, an example of dispersion of particles from uh, Fukushima in 2011. And you can see the coloured uh, points are individual uh, model particles. The, the colour denotes the height of the particle in the atmosphere. When the animation starts again, you'll see the plume that starts from the release time and particles are, are transported away. And uh, the gray scale uh, uh, shows the amount of deposited cesium-137, which is an important uh, aspect of this type of application. So since its original purpose of radiological modeling, NAME is now used to model a, a huge range of things, basically anything that's, that's emitted into the atmosphere. So uh, smoke from industrial fires or from, from forest fires, volcanic eruptions, so we can go with the ash and, and the gases, um, air quality applications, so from, from a wide range of sources like traffic and, and domestic combustion, even to the dispersion of, of insects uh, and viruses which can which can spread animal diseases like, uh, like blue tongue and uh, foot and mouth disease. So NAME is primarily developed at the Met Office, but we do have uh, a wider network of uh, uh, developers and users of, of the model, and this slide shows uh, some of those. It's a, it's a little bit out of date, but the point is there's quite a lot of them, and these range from uh, students and academics at universities, uh, other public uh, bodies and, and government agencies in the UK and, and abroad, uh, as well as other national meteorological centres. So we have quite a wide range of different users with different levels of, of technical um, skills and experience. Some of these will be um, actively developing the, 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 the Fortran code uh, and doing research with the model. Others will be running the model, but kind of treating it as a black box. Uh, and others will just be taking data from, from the model or its, or its downstream products. Uh, and just a quick note, not all of these uh, collaborators and partners use uh, Jasmine to run name, but certainly some of them, some of them do. And one of the challenges that we have is, is how our collaborators and partners can access the model and its input data. And that's partly because the, metal, uh, the code is stored in a private GitHub repository for various reasons. And also the input data required is, is quite large and not always uh, readily accessible. And this is where Jasmine comes in for us. So name on Jasmine, uh, that's what we call this, this project. 
uh, imaginatively, uh, brings everything together in one place for our external uh, collaborating partners to, to use, to run uh, name with everything they need. So starting off with the source code, uh, so that people can actually um, modify the code if, if they want to implement a new scheme or parameterization and test it out. But there's also pre-compiled uh, executables there, ready to be run on Lotus. We also provide a, an archive of, of input data, so most importantly, the, the meteorological data from the MetOff Unified Model. And that's an archive that goes back quite a number of years, so it can be used in, in the historical uh, uh, case studies, but it's also uh, updated daily, uh, so uh, current events can be can be looked at as well. We also maintain uh, the required libraries uh, that are required by name. We also include uh, some example name uh, input files so that somebody can take an existing volcanic ash type simulation, modify it to their specific needs, and, 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 and go away and do their, do their work. So with the input data, we clearly benefit from the storage capability that Jasmine gives us. So we have a name uh, group workspace. Uh, with I think about 100 terabytes on there. Uh, much of that is taken up by actually the, the unified model data and we're considering uh, moving that to perhaps a CEDA archive instead to free up some of that space. Um, and this is also where users will store their uh, model outputs. There's also, of course, the compute cluster um, and generally uh, jo the name jobs are submitted to, to Lotus. And as name is such a uh, has such a varied uh, range of uh, applications, so too are the, the resource requirements for those name runs. So something very light could take a, a single thread in just a few minutes to something that requires all of the resources on a node uh, for, for many hours. And we also maintain some supporting tools on there, so, uh, which is mainly in the form of a, a Python code base called Adapt Python and that's used to analyze and visualize uh, the name output. Finally, uh, there's a new-ish uh, prototype a web processing service, which uh, presents the user with a web browser uh, form. So it's just simply some uh, drop-down boxes and free text boxes where they can uh, simply set up a, a fairly simple uh, name run and, and access the data that way. So this really eliminates any of the, the technical uh, skills needed uh, in the more usual way. And I'll talk more about that in a later slide. In terms of the access requirements, obviously a Jasmine account is required, but then access to the name user workspace is also required and that's uh, <coughs> granted by the Met Office. And in order to get that, we do ask that the user has already uh, an institutional name research license or is working towards getting one. And as long as there's no commercial aspects and that's usually pretty straightforward. So the, the main point is Jasmine gives us the capability to bring all of these together in one place so that our users can easily log in and get going pretty much straight away. As I mentioned, many of our, uh, our users and, and uh, people in our uh, name community have a very wide range of experience when they come to use the model. So we uh, have for a number of years run a name training course. This is in person at the Met Office over two days, usually occurs in June. And it gives people an introduction to name, uh, so the underpinning science, uh, the basics of the code structure, an understanding of what input data is required and how to interrogate the output data, uh, and also an understanding of the different applications. And that's done by a mixture of lectures and discussion sessions, but importantly, hands-on practical exercises. And this element uh, uses Jasmine uh, for the last few years. So we have uh, a wide range of people on these courses, but they do tend to be mainly from academic, um, areas, either students or postdocs and sometimes academics, but also from other um, parts of the, the name user community. Uh, it, there's no cost to attend, and if you're interested, come and, come and ask me uh, if, if, you're, uh, if you work in that, this sort of area. So the practical exercises on, on Jasmine, uh, they've been, um, the practical element's been run on Jasmine for the last couple of years. Um, it involves about 10 practical guided exercises um, running from something quite simple, like a single uh, trace release here from, from Exeter. Um, uh, and that would be quite a lightweight job, uh, just a few minutes on, on a single core, all the way up to 
something much more uh, computationally demanding, like a full air quality type run, you know, sort of an ozone uh, concentration field that would be output, and that's much more resource uh, intensive. And, um, so some of the key advantages that we have and why we moved to doing the training course on Jasmine is that it, we, we know that everybody's using the same uh, setup. Everybody's using exactly the same version of the code, the same versions of the light required libraries, uh, the same architecture. So it really gets rid of all of that troubleshooting of why won't it run on my laptop or why is it, I'm getting a slightly different answer from my university's cluster. Um, they are important issues. Um, but we want the training course to be focused on an understanding of, of name. So it really helps us as, as organizers of the training course to do that. Uh, but also because we want our uh, name community to use Jasmine in the future, the course not only introduces introduce them to the name model, but also to running on Jasmine. And some of the people that come to the course have never used Jasmine before. So it's kind of a, a double gain. Uh, a couple of the challenges, um, like with any system, there are, there are planned and unplanned outages, and, and if that coincides with a training course, that can be uh, quite challenging, so we have to maintain a, a backup option. Um, usually these training courses are, are planned four or five months in advance, so um, it's, it's helpful to know about those planned outages as far in advance as, as possible so that we can mitigate against that. Um, sometimes the queues can seem quite busy and so even quite small jobs seem to take quite a long time to sit in the queue and for a training course that can be quite a hindrance so any uh, tips uh, on how we can improve that or um, any advice on that would be really appreciated and obviously we need to make sure people have signed up for their Jasmine account before they turn up and that's not always easy either. So a few uh, slides on the name Web Processing Service, which is the, the web-based form to run a simple name run. Uh, I'm quite glad that Jasmine is down at the moment because I wasn't tempted to do a live demo, which can always go wrong. Uh, so instead, you've just got some screenshots, which luckily I did before it was taken down. Uh, so this is the home page, and you can see there's a, um, a list of four uh, basic run types. Um, I won't go into the details of what they are, but I'll go through a quick example of the top one, the name, uh, the name trajectory run. So if I click on that one, I'd see a, a, a page that looks something like this. There's two separate screenshots. And it's just a, a simple form uh, with some drop-down boxes and free text fields uh, that can be uh, populated. And then there's a big green button at the bottom to, to submit. And after a, a relatively short amount of time, a couple of minutes or so, depending on exactly your, your setup, you would get a, a page with some output. And this is one particular example. I've set uh, some particles to be released from Harwell from, from right here. Um, and the model is running backwards in time. So the, the, the lines on the graphs on the left show um, the, the trajectories of those particles back in time, starting from Harwell. And you can see that the uh, particles in red and blue, which were released low to the ground, generally uh, originated from, from the east, whereas the particles released higher up uh, came from generally the south. Uh, and I picked this time because it was a recent uh, Saharan dust event. So you can see that matches quite nicely with the, the model output. Those particles are indeed coming from, from that general region. So this is a, a way of uh, users picking up the model and doing a really simple run without having to know any of the technical details, of what, uh, compiling the code, setting up the input data, et cetera. It was very good for uh, outreach and, and just quick informative runs, really. This is currently a prototype, uh, but there has been some work um, for, the, for the coming year uh, that's been funded to, to make some improvements. Currently, you need uh, an access to the name group workspace to access this, but the longer term plan is that anybody with a CEDA um, account will be able to access this. I just wanted to finish with a couple of slides on uh, some example research that has been done using uh, Jasmine. Um, I won't go into the details on this. Um, the main point is that people are doing research with name on Jasmine. So this is a, a slide provided by Charlie Bates, who has uh, recently completed a master, uh, master's uh, a degree, uh, and he was looking at um, modeling uh, volcanic ash dispersion, looking at the effect of using different parameterizations and how that affects uh, the, the amount of ash deposited to the ground. 
and all of the work that Charlie did was was using uh, Jasmine, so running the simulations, doing the analysis, and, and creating these visualizations. Uh, similarly here, um, Freya Wakelum also used name on Jasmine, also for volcanic uh, ash purposes, uh, when she was doing her master's project at Imperial College. Uh, again, all done on Jasmine. And here is uh, an example of uh, some work from uh, Kathy Trillinger at Cicero, uh, looking at inversion of uh, um, uh, greenhouse gas and ozone depleting gases from uh, for Australia. So I didn't want to go into detail. The main point was people are doing stuff, and it's and it's helping us to work with people with our with our model, and that would would not be easy to do without without Jasmine. Uh, so. Well, I'll bring it to a close there. In summary, we're using Jasmine to work with our name user community. It brings together everything in one place, so the model, the input data, the supporting tools, together with the storage and the compute. Um, we, we run our name training course using Jasmine, uh, and the new name web processing service makes the, the model much more accessible. But thank you very much. Uh, happy to take any questions. Um, just quick comments about the um, um, the key you were saying this is on the fuse um, and that was one aspect of the training accounts which I mentioned earlier, which I forgot to write was that um, with the training accounts they're pre-configured to um, be able to submit to um Cube workshop, which is what we use for testing training workshops. Um, now all training accounts come so the perfect attached to that particular partition too. Um, so that's that's one benefit that you would get from you following the adjusted training accounts and, and you could add those ones to the main group workspace so the temporary member But uh, the difficulty is that it's um it's if you, if if people on the course want to be able to um, Chapters, I mean, existing chapters, mm. it's difficult to temporarily add them to the, okay. to the workshop queue, so it's kind of one of the but it's interesting. Sounds like a good option to explore for sure. Yeah, yeah. thank you.